There are so many ways to use Dollar Tree fabric. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. The first project I'm going to show you is a disc organizer flip. All right, so I got this at the thrift store. Beautiful little organizer. I don't know if it was for a desk or for a kid's room. Very cute. It does have some damage on the back of the drawer, but that's okay. Totally okay with me for what I'm going to use it for anyway. I did paint over it a very long time ago with that white, thinking maybe I could cover it up, but that was, you know, several years ago, and I didn't understand different types of decals and all that. Well, apparently these are permanent. <laughs> I can't get it out, so I'm just going to sand it off to make it smooth, just to prepare it for the paint. I'm also going to remove this little drawer pull. The little knob here is very cute, but for the look that we are going to give it, I want to get something a little bit different. And I do happen to have a stash of drawer pulls in my thrifted supply. So anytime you sand, be sure you wipe your surfaces down. Always, always, when you get them from the thrift store, vacuum, clean with some disinfectant. You can use alcohol wipes. Um, just clean everything off. You want to get all the extra gunk off. If it's a shiny surface, you can go over it with a sanding block. That'll help your paint adhere a little bit better. And then be sure that you go down each one of those little cubbies and get those cleaned out too in the corners too. Y'all did not even realize this is a Pottery Barn piece. Gorgeous. I am going to take off the sticker. I just used a little bit of cleaning spray. It's just the stuff that um, I had on hand in the basement. I use on everything. And I'm gonna wipe that away, dry it really well. We don't want any oils to be on there. We want our sheepskin chalk paint to smoothly apply and not peel away. So after it's dried from the thorough cleaning that we're going to do, I'm going to paint this with this sheepskin paint. I gave this one kind of a thick coat here all over the front all over the back i did not go inside the drawer but just a few inches where you might see when you pull it out and i did do the drawer too now you can use ribbon if you can't find the fabric here are some ribbons that you can use to embellish and decorate whatever thrifted little organizer you have but look at these fabrics I found recently at Dollar Tree. Oh my goodness, y'all know how I am for bees and sunflowers. I was over the moon with this. So look at these pretty prints. And then this black and white one has been around a while. It's, it was kind of with their farmhouse stuff. But it's an option, definitely. You use any fabric that you like. This is for inspiration, y'all. So here it is painted, and I showed you the drawer all painted up. Nice and clean and painted. Now we're going to use some Mod Podge. I'm going to use matte because I like a matte finish. I'm going to use a big brush just because it gets on there thicker and I want it to soak through the fabric. You see that this one piece of fabric fits on the back and I still have extra and I love that. I'm going to go all the way up to the top edge which I have decided to make you guess about because I'm not showing you there. <laughs> but you get the idea. Go all the way up to the top. And uh, my brush was flaking a little. Just pick that out and go back over it, you know. You know how it is. It's a thrifted brush, what do I expect? But it works really well. Just have to pick the little hairs out from time to time. All right, I'm gonna lay this down and pull it down a little bit to make sure that I've spared as much extra fabric pieces as I can. If I wanna use it on something else, I wanna be sure I don't have little thin ribbons. I wanna actually have little blocks I can use, right? So then I'm gonna just work in sections. And you can see here the size of this brush. I'm kind of thickly putting this on. Y'all look at my brush sinking down into the Mod Podge. You should have seen the, the mess that I edited out here. Oh, I had it everywhere. Look at that. Look at that. Had it on my fingers and everywhere. Ew. Y'all know how it is. Crafting life, right? Okay. So then I'm just going to lay this down. I'm going to use my hands and, you know, sort of toward the middle and outward. Always working outward to make sure there's no bubbles or wrinkles. I'm going to push them out and away. And then I'm going to get my little squeegee tool here. And uh, if you don't have one of these, no problem. Grab an old credit card. You can use your driver's license. Um, you know, whatever you have there to just kind of make that even. You can even use a ruler. And then I am going to grab that Mod Podge when it's nice and smooth and put a nice substantial coat 
on the whole thing. Again, not showing you the top, so just use your imagination there. And when you go to the edges when you're using fabric like this, be sure you don't just stop at the edge. Kind of overlap a little bit like you saw me doing. Then I'm going to go back in and cut off some um, of the excess just to get it out of the way make it a little easier to work with. Once it is completely dry, you can leave it overnight if you want, however you want to do it. You're going to go in with an X-Acto knife or your scissors, some detailing scissors, and you are going to just cut around. Because you put Mod Podge on that fabric, it now makes it very sturdy and tough, and it's very easy to cut through, like you would be cutting through paper. And don't worry, if you have a couple of little extra hairs here and there, just sand them or clip them off. I like to go around the edges, again, just to be sure with some Mod Podge. I want to be sure everything is sealed in and that this project is going to last me a very long time. This is not the type of Mod Podge that you would wash or clean with water or a cleaning spray of any sort. You would just dust this, okay? Putting water on it is just going to reactivate it and it's going to get soft and make a mess. So I want to make a little peekaboo drawer here. And I thought putting this fabric on the inside is almost like having the bees hiding inside of the honeycomb or the hive. So, I, yeah, I was very proud of myself for this idea. But you can do it any way that you like. Now, rather than trying to figure out dimensions, because you know I don't like the numbers, I am going to just press this in. Is it completely even? It is not. But I'm just going to do the best I can here and just kind of mark it with a pencil. Obviously, you want to do this upside down. Uh, it didn't occur to me when I did it at the time, but you can erase your line or cut right inside of the line if you see your pencil line in there and it bothers you. You can just cut it right off. You can just erase it. So I'm just carefully going along that line to get my fabric ready for the drawer. So this is almost like we're making this like a shelf liner or something, like a drawer liner, but we're doing it with fabric. Yay, it fits. So I'm going to add some Mod Podge. And I am going to, because I'm using fabric now, when you're using paper, you do not want to use as much Mod Podge because it will wrinkle and crease. And if it's tissue paper, it will rip and tear. But with fabric, it's very sturdy. You want to use a lot because it's thicker. Okay? For the same reason you wouldn't wear a paper, a paper shirt and expect for it to last. You use fabric, right? Because it lasts. So we're going to add this in here on top of that Mod Podge coat. And if you get enough in there, you can kind of slide it around a little bit to make sure that it's, you know, in your corners as it should be. You can also use your squeegee here. Get the lines out, you know, where there are folds in the fabric. But you don't have to iron your fabric first when you're using Mod Podge because they will come out when you press it down. So don't waste your time doing that. You know, you could be crafting something else, girl or guy, whoever. You know, I just love having y'all here. I don't, I don't care anything about... Any specifics like that, I just love having you here. So you're going to go back over it with some Mod Podge. It'll look kind of uh, milky until it's dry. And then when it's dry, look how crisp and beautiful that is. Okay, so now we're going to put a little more of the honeycomb right on top of that drawer. And I'm going to go right over the hole where the knob is because, or where the knob will be, because um, I'll be able to see that hole through that fabric. And then we'll be able to put the knob back in place. I won't have to do any guesswork. So again, I'm just working in sections and I'm going to, I had already cut this piece down. I had measured that little raised area because this drawer does have a lip on it. I'm just going to press it down a little bit. Then I'm going to go into my next little section. Put that on, press that down. And then you'll just continue that process and until uh, you get to the end. And then you want to be sure that you lay it down nice and smooth like we have done before. Nice and smooth. And then also, after you straighten that out and you use your little hand and your squeegee and you get all nice and flat and crisp, then you can go back around and make sure that it is even. If you have a flat drawer that doesn't have any beveling, you don't have to worry about this at all. But when I was gluing it down, I pulled it a little too far, so I just clipped it off. It's just not even a big deal. As long as both ends look the same, I'm happy with that. Now we're going back over it with some Mod Podge, same as we did the drawer insert. I'm just going to go all the way over it and be sure that you get your edges too, so that the edges will stay down and not pull away. Once it's dry, look how crisp and beautiful that color is. You can see the shadow where the hole is. 
that is hard now. That fabric is hard. I'm going to take an awl, which is this little punch tool that I have. You can use an ice pick or something like that, or a little screwdriver. Poke it right back through there. It makes the perfect hole. No mess, no cut marks. Perfect. So here is a pack that I thrifted, and it has white knobs. Now, I do go over this with some uh, that matte Mod Podge to, to matte it down because it's very glossy right now. But the screw that was in that original drawer fits perfectly in here, which makes me very happy because I know it's the right length. So I'm just going to screw that onto there and lock it in. Yes. You don't want to go too tight because you don't want to strip out the holes, but I also do not want this to jiggle. So I'm just giving a little turn there and it's nice and tight. So you can choose any yellow that you like. For this fabric, I have chosen, I believe this said, was it honeycomb or harvest? I don't know. Um, but anyway, that yellow, it matches the fabric that I used on the back and on the front. It is one of the shades that are one of the multiple shades of the honeycomb. There are several different ones. You can use whatever yellow that you like. This is more of a goldish yellow, more of a, like a honey yellow, I guess you could say. So all of these little dividers and edges are going to get two coats of this beautiful golden yellow. And I'm using a sponge brush so that the, if you used a brush that has hair on it, it would kind of splay out to the sides and you wouldn't get that crisp line. Then I'm going to take a more detailed brush and go around the lip, I guess you would call it, of this beveled edge on the drawer. I just pulled it out and now I'm going to go over where the fabric meets that lip and go all over that and then I will put it right on the face of the drawer top. So I'll show you that also. Just be really careful, support your hand. You know, I don't want to make a big mess on the sides, but surely if you wanted to paint the drawer solid yellow, you could do that too. But I just want to put it on the lip. Again, those little flashy things that you don't necessarily notice. Y'all come see my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. It is completely free and I would love to see you down in the comments. The next project is a standing sign. All right, so I'm gonna take a piece of that Dollar Tree fabric and this little sign, all you need is love. I'm going to cut out one of these little pictures because this one comes with a bunch of little vignettes. Makes it perfect for crafting, y'all. I should've got more pieces, but I didn't realize when I bought it because I didn't open it. I'm gonna take a very small screwdriver and remove the screws that's holding this little black edge down. I take those all out. It'll lift completely up. There's no glue. I'm going to use that backing or the little insert they had to draw on a piece of cardstock. Or you can use a piece of uh, poster board, whatever you have. Something thicker than a regular piece of paper, though, because we need a backing for that beautiful little vignette. Before I glue it down, I'm going to fray the edges just to give it a... You know, I like my rustic, just to give it a little more of a rustic look. Plus, it's going to blend a little bit better with the paper. Um, in case some of the picture shows in the frame, and some of mine will show, you know, in the frame, and I, that's okay, because it's going to blend in nicely, and you really won't notice that it isn't part of the original design. So, I'm going to just kind of go over this. I'm not using a heavy coat on the paper. Again, paper, you get it too wet, it's going to fold and wrinkle and curl on you. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to try to center this down in the middle of this paper as best I can. I'm not going to sweat it. I'm going to use my fingers and then a little squeegee to put it in place. Then I'll go back over the entire thing, including the paper and the fabric with some Mod Podge. I'm not going to use too much. We're going to make these two pieces into one piece now. They are going to be attached together with this Mod Podge and they become one piece is going to be the decor piece that we put in the center of this frame. We're not going to use it as a traditional picture frame. Nope, we're not. We're going to use this beautiful picture here and we're going to use it for decoration. I love doing that with Dollar Tree stuff and because you can experiment with Dollar Tree items without breaking the bank and I love that. So once I get it completely coated, I am going to set it to the side and let it dry. You may want to put something like a tack or piece of tape just on the edges so that it doesn't curl up, but if you use a good quality cardstock, it's not going to curl very much. Okay, now I had some burlap from Dollar Tree, decided not to use that. I am going to use the burlap that I got from burlapfabric.com. 
This is not a sponsored video, but they have sent me goodies and I have enjoyed everything I've gotten from them. And you'll see me using them throughout my projects here and there. Very good quality, they have good sales, you know. Okay, so I'm gonna use just a little bit of hot glue to attach the burlap down. We don't need to Mod Podge this. The dry time would be crazy on a piece of burlap like this. So we're not gonna do that. And this is like, I believe this is a five inch ribbon, I think is what it's called, but it's, you know, a roll of burlap. Love to use this in my wreaths. I have got it glued down. I'm trimming it off. And I also put a piece of paper on the other side because we're, we're working on the back side of this frame. The front side of the frame, I've just covered with a little bit of craft paper. Nice and neat. It would make it perfect for selling or for a gift. Now, just with some detail scissors, go back in and make sure that you get it just flush with the edges to give it a nice finished look. Okay. And it is centered because it's not quite big enough to grow across the top and bottom. So I have this beautiful thrifted piece of trim and I am gonna put this right on the top and it will cover the seam and also the um, frame. And then I will do the same thing on the bottom. This is a, it's pretty thick. I mean, as far as trim goes, you know, sometimes on trim, you gotta be super careful because it's thin, it has a lot of openings and then you end up possibly burning your fingers. So. Just to be on the safe side, go ahead and grab those little pink finger protectors that we get from Dollar Tree. Um, I do have some linked in my Amazon store uh, that are blue, that are a little bit bigger. If you are looking for some and can't find them, totally up to you. I am an Amazon affiliate. You should know that ahead of time. Lots of goodies over there in my store. That Okay, so you see here what I'm doing. I'm just pressing it down into the glue. Bare fingers, it's so thick that I didn't even, no glue came out. And then I'm using a thin bead of glue because I don't want the mess of glue squishing out. Nobody wants that, right? Nope. Again, use whatever fabrics you like or you have. You don't have to use this particular one. This is just something that I love, so I'm showing you what brings me joy, but I encourage you always to make it your own. Now I'm gonna go right across the top, sides, you know, bottom, with a thin stream of glue and just set that back in there. And we know it's gonna fit because it's the original, we used the original size that came out of the frame. So look at that, so cute. If you wanted to use some of that matte Mod Podge on this black piece, you could do that as well. And that would give it a little more of a matte finish, but I didn't bother with it in this one. Some hot glue on the back and it does, it will screw in, but I'm gonna use some hot glue to hold it in place until I get those screws back in place. You can certainly glue this down and just ditch those screws if you don't wanna use them, but I like them. I think it, it gives it a little more of an expensive look and it makes it a little more finished. You know, not like something's missing. So I'm just gonna screw that in there. Y'all, I am so ready to fall craft. I've done some Halloween, but I am ready for fall crafting and I hope y'all are here for it because I'm about ready to get started. No joke. I start after the 4th of July anyway, but I am itching right now. <laughs> y'all, come and join us on our cruise over at CraftyCruiseGetaway.com. You can find all the information for next year in February. I'd love to meet you. All right, the next one's a mini riser. So for those of you who are still doing tiered trays, I've got a goodie for you. We're gonna use some wood pieces. Now this one I got uh, thrifted and then the little stump came from Dollar Tree. I've got some clear wax from Waverly and some home decor chalk paint in sheepskin. I'm gonna take my foam brush first and go right around that little nude section of wood. Why am I doing this? Well, because if you put fabric on a piece of material that is dark colored, you're going to see dark through it you will you'll see the dark right through it and i don't want to see anything dark this light color is going to make it pop when you put the fabric on top of it so that's why i do it this way but if you don't mind it the other way you don't even have to do this step sponge brush just makes this easy to go around my curves and just get it right where i want it it's not perfect but i'm not striving for perfection we don't do that on this channel do we we do not so this cute little stump is going to get some wax because it looks a little bit dry and ashy as the kids would say so i'm going to go over that with a little bit of this wax we can put some lotion on the skin in the cracks this is just really going to help preserve it make it look nice 
kind of bring it back to life, if you will. Just kind of flicking it on there with a little, um, it's not a stencil brush, but it's a, you know, a firm little brush there. I'm going to set it aside and let that soak in. Look at the menagerie of goodies right here. You can pick any one of these that will fit on your little mini tray. I'm going to use this one on the side that says honey. And if you are a farmhouse lover, this might be the one for you because it is gray, black, and white. Just a little bit of yellow on it. So it's a square. I'm going to cut that square. I'm going to fold it over two times and then try to get those edges nice and neat. It will help you cut your circle if you make terrible circles. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, as I've said, but you want to make your circle circular, right? Not oblong, because then you've wasted your piece and you got to do something else. Once you get it cut, you can assemble your top and bottom together. Of course, you want dry paint on there, of course. Center that. Hold it in place. You can also use some wood glue or E6000 if you would prefer. Then once that has set up, we are ready to get the edges of the wood piece. We're going to preserve that too because those will flake off. Could have done this in the first step, I guess, when I was doing the other one, but that's okay. You know, you live, you learn. And again, we don't sweat that kind of stuff around here, do we? No, we strive for joy every day and every visit you have on my channel. I want to bring you a smile. I want to give you some good memories and I want to teach you some things and show you how to be confident in your crafting. Okay, so now I'm going to put, again, you can put a thicker layer because we're using fabric. I'm going to put that layer down on that piece of wood, flick off the brush hair, and then I'm just going to lay it right on top. Hallelujah that it fits because I didn't measure anything. I just eyeballed it. Then I'm just going to kind of rub it from the inside out and so you can tug it a little bit and it'll still move. And then press it back down. And that's just what I did there. And then... I will go over it with some more Mod Podge. I'll set that aside and let it dry. You can see that it's nice. It's milky looking, so you know you've got a good coverage, right? You got a good coverage there. And then once it dries, it is going to look like this. Nice and crisp. How cute is that? Now the stumps are not completely level, so you don't want to use this for a candle that you light. Next project is a mini burlap bag. So I thrifted these, but they came from Michael's, probably cost a dollar, if that much. I'm going to use something on the inside to keep our Mod Podge from soaking to the back and closing that bag off. So I'm just using a piece of foam board here. And you can wrap yours with some plastic if you're concerned, or a sandwich bag, so that it doesn't stick. And then choose another print that you like. And I love this one. Welcome to our hive. It's got the little bee on it, and the honey, and the heart super cute and I also think this would be really cute like for a gift giving idea if you were going to give somebody a little something or you could even put a gift card in here if you wanted to just to brighten somebody's day so I'm going to peel this off just like we did on the other one just kind of pull those threads get your fingernail pull the little threads or tweezers if you need them and maybe even a pin and just pull some of those loose all the way around the edges so I've got just a little bit of a fray just I feel like it helps me blend out my edges a little bit better and that works best for my type of crafting you could also if you didn't want to do this part you could trim it out with um, either be very careful when you cut and make it nice and square or you could trim it out with some ribbon or some jute something like that okay so remember what I said about burlap this stuff is thick and it's gonna take quite a bit of Mod Podge to get anything to stick to it, right? So I'm gonna put a good coat. I mean, it's gonna look like mayonnaise on a piece of toast. It, it's got to be thick. I'm gonna lay my little beautiful vignette picture on here, push it down. You will see even then, it's not trying to stick. You gotta go back over the top of it with a good thick coat of that Mod Podge, and I mean, a good coat. This little bag is gonna be stiff on the front when we're done with it. But it makes it so nice because it won't bend down or buckle when you put things in it. And you know guys, I, in the end screen I'm gonna show you everything completed. So don't be upset or worried that you didn't see something or that I missed something to show you. you you're gonna see it very very soon. 
you're just going to go all over this pull up on that after you get done kind of lift up on it so it's not touching the divider that you have on the inside unless it's a you know a piece of saran wrap or a plastic bag then that won't matter because it should peel away from that fairly well but i can't guarantee it can't guarantee it so i did it this way all right very nice it is stuck now here's that beautiful bag y'all ready to decorate or give as a gift i love it i just have a paint bottle in there right now just to show you this is how you can use dollar tree fabric if you've passed up on it before go back and give it a second look a little bit of mod podge a little hot glue and you can make some beautiful decor pieces from one two or three pieces of fabric and they're coordinating so they look great all at one time in your decor i just really love using the dollar tree fabrics i have used the burlap i have used the ribbons i have used the cotton fabrics like you see me use here and i have to say by far the cotton fabric is the best for me because for crafting i don't need to go buy several yards of anything i just need little pieces and a dollar 25 for these beautiful pieces very well made pieces yes very worth my money definitely we made three different projects out of one sheet of fabric that's perfect you may save a ton of money like this i hope that y'all enjoyed this and that you got a lot of inspiration from this too i always encourage you to do it your own though look at that beautiful organizer now look at all the ways you can use this or you can put your makeup in there whatever you like be sure you check out the links below for the crafty cruise getaway and check out that box for another video you'll love see you soon bye